guests will come and they will blow your mind. The audience will do so in kind. The little vanity mixed with some insanity on the morning show with GMP. Fingers crossed then. Hola, bon dia, Graham Munson here from expatsportugal.com with the Good Morning Portugal show, live stream and podcast. Oh, early fly in the studio. It's fly season here in Portugal. The first fly papers are up. I know it's disgusting, um, but have you got a better solution yourself? Uh, it is moved to Portugal Thursday. That's not very, I'm not selling it, am I? <laughs> move to Portugal. Enjoy fly season. No, there are many other things to enjoy. Uh, here in Portugal. We've got a Casa do Dia from Cindy B this morning in Braga because our attention is on the north of Portugal today, of course, uh, our man in the north. Vitor is joining us. Always great fun when Vitor joins us. Uh, looks like the tech is a little bit patchy, uh, sketchy this morning, so we'll see how it all holds up. Um, <laughs> move maybe now to the edge of your seat and watch this unfold this morning. So let's see if things settle down as we look at a few of your comments uh, this morning. Uh, T-Duck, were you in first this morning? T-Duck, 7.51 this morning. Bon dia, Algria Gumpers. Doma Lisboa, Ensolarada, Equiant. Nice and hot and sunny in the capital. Had a great time at the meetup yesterday, says uh, T-Duck. Um, if that comment will make it onto the screen. Yes, it will. Okay. And he's got Portuguese sayings for us, but let's see who else is in this morning before we go to those. Love those. Uh, Moaz is in. Ian is in with some uh, God Squad uh, thought of the day. And uh, I've seen that the prof is in as well. Where are you, prof? Back in the UK, I think. Uh, James is in. Good morning, James. Andrew. Andrew, how's Ben doing this morning? Our new mate, Ben. I love that photo of Ben, but just let me know. He's okay with me showing it again, will you? Uh, Matty is here as well. Great to see you, Matty, yesterday at the meetup. Thanks to everybody, actually, who turned up yesterday. New and regulars alike. Fantastic day in the Bay yesterday. Uh, Tony Baldilocks is here. Rebel Mama's in. Everyone, Victoria, who was our guest, of course, yesterday. And uh, anyone else in we uh, haven't said hello to or we haven't seen ever before uh, on the screen. Not yet. Oh, Anna Olsen is here who sent me some photos yesterday. That reminds me. I was looking for the photos that were sent in in a huge, in my huge sack. I was looking for um, correspondence. Thank you very much, uh, Anna. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to try. Try and download some link from, uh, tell, tell me how it's looking in the, if I've just got a local problem here or if you're experiencing as well, folks. But uh, lovely pictures in from Anna, who's recovering at the moment. Um, grateful to be in isolation in my new flat, she says, in Villa Real de Sant Antonio, accompanied with the monkeys. Not those, not those, not the band and not the pox, <laughs> we hope. Um, but uh, lovely photos from you, Anna. I'll show you the monkeys in, or the monkey in question. Is that a part of your decor there? Um, that's very prophetic <laughs> of you, is it not? Um, interesting. Okay, I'll endeavour to bring those to the screen for you. And um, the uh, when I, when the show collapsed on Monday, a few technical issues that we're working our way through. But when the show collapsed on Monday, um, somebody was suggesting hastily suggesting um, that I turn the video off and just talk. Um, it, maybe it's a conspiracy to get rid of the pictures, to get rid of the visual. Um, but that's not a bad idea, and I didn't think of it. Um, we learned that, did we not, in, in the pandemic crisis when everybody went to Zoom? I'll oh, just turn my camera off. Maybe that will help. So um, that's that's a little bit of a, a strategy for me if things don't work especially well. And it'll be a proper radio show then, uh, won't it, if we do that. Let me just see if I can bring you the lovely pickies from Anna then. Uh, onto the screen. I uh, wonder how that's going. How's it looking at your end? Um, glitchy or nice and smooth? And who doesn't like it? Sometimes glitchy in the morning, sometimes nice and smooth first thing in the morning. And uh, Deagle, this is especially for you. You've sent me your excellent results, I think both with your physical fitness uh, and with um, your Portuguese. So uh, hold on, I'm all over the place here with me comments. So let me just get back in the right place uh, with the comments this morning. Uh, Ian saying hello to Moaz. Yeah. Oh, I, let, let me just um, find the, the uh, quotes. We'll come to the quotes in just a moment. There you go. Anonymous quotes coming up. But for Deagle, before we go there, and with the brain, we haven't seen this for a long time, have we, from uh, Philomena? A language tuition tomorrow um, with Mia, hopefully. Um, and uh, Frank is joining us on the screen from the Algarve. We talked a lot about the Algarve, haven't we, uh, this week? Victoria, yesterday from the Algarve. Uh, this lovely picture from the Algarve from Anna. Look at that. It's beautiful, isn't it? Um, don't know if that's 
that's probably the they're probably the sunset, isn't it, rather than the dawn um, with that aspect there. And the monkey sign that she has for some reason on her. <laughs> Remember where you saw it first. It was foretold. <laughs> Good morning, Portugal show. Thank you, Anna, for those very much indeed. OK, so uh, Portuguese sayings, then let's go to those. Um, and uh, I think we've got anonymous quotes as well this morning from T-Duck. We do. Thank you for everything you do, T-Duck. Sereira. Same era, name Beira. Oh, without land nor roof. Okay, so Beira is land, isn't it? We know that from the Beiras, don't we? The Beiras region of Portugal, or is that is it the is it called the roof of Portugal, the Beiras? Interesting. So without land nor roof, destitute. Yeah, that's also a little bit prophetic as well, isn't it? These crazy times we're living in. Um, Torcer o nariz. Wrinkle the nose, disagree with something. Oh, I see you're wrinkling your nose. Uh, you're disagreeing with something. Very good. I need to make a note of that one. And um, Esther Feito al Bife, uh, to be done to the beef. I am done to the beef, I tell you. Encounter a problem that you don't know how to solve. Wow. Um, very prescient <laughs> comments this morning. Comments on world affairs. Uh, my um, my favourite exercise, is this is an anon anonymous quote from um, T-Duck this morning. Uh, my favourite exercise is a cross between a lunge and a crunch. I call it lunch. Very good. Um, I choked on a carrot this afternoon and all I could think was, I bet a donut wouldn't have done this to me. Well, there is that, isn't there? That's, yes. Um, these are quite amazing this morning. And it sure is strange that after Tuesday, the rest of the week... <laughs> <laughs> Spells WTF. It's true, isn't it? Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Oh my goodness. Um, yes, the end of my week. Um, I, I Friday is the beginning, is 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 my Saturday, really. Um, a busy day on a Friday, of course. Uh, the show here this morning, uh, and we have the uh, webinar tonight. What webinar, Carl? I hear you ask. Uh, well, the webinar tonight is all about the D7 visa. Important one, Gilda. Uh, where, where where we got messed up by the technology on Monday. We'll see what we could do tonight on the Zoom call. Um, everything you need to know about Portugal's D7 visa tonight, Thursday, the 26th of May, such as it is, from 7.30 tonight. Get onto our website to book yourself in on that if there's anything you want to ask Gilda live and direct. Gilda and I talking twice uh, this week. And then after that, of course, I host the Premium Plus meetup at 9 p.m. for you uh, Premium Plus members. Uh, who have uh, accelerated your plans to move here to Portugal. And uh, that is something. That's a thing, isn't it? But lots of people are accelerating their plans uh, to be here in Portugal, it would seem. Uh, lovely to meet you, Vanessa. The first person I've met who came from uh, New Zealand. Um, to Not to just be at the meetup, to be in Portugal, but uh, uh, great to meet you. Uh, we know you from the screen, and now we know you in person, Vanessa. Great to meet you. And yes, first new Kiwi. First, first. I don't think you're originally a Kiwi. Are you? You've been living in New Zealand uh, for some time, uh, but uh, coming to back to Europe, coming back to Europe, originally from UK, I think. Um, but interesting to see somebody um, expatriating um, from New Zealand. Okay, uh, God Squad thought of the day, tip of the day. Um, it really doesn't matter what type of exercise you do, uh, says uh, says Coach Turner. Do something you really enjoy and it'll be easier to maintain. For instance, dancing can be fantastic. Party like it's 1999 or the Roaring 20s. Um, yeah, absolutely. And we're going to be doing that in San Martino de Porto, actually. I've just found out yesterday the Festa of Sant Antonio is nine nine nights of music. <laughs> nine straight nights of music in the bay. And I will get the poster onto the screen <laughs> in the next few days. From the 10th to the 19th of June. Uh, over here in San Martino de Porto and want, want to be part of that action. Mo is delighted to be the second one in today. Oh, going back to Coach Turner for the moment, if you weren't here yesterday, um, he's not a very good advert for his services, according to the documentary evidence I have received. He weighed himself yesterday and cracked the scales. Hopefully shoddy workmanship rather than user error. Or, or use a consequence there, Ian. If you brought yourself some new scales, or are you just going to give up on that sort of behavior, <laughs> weighing yourself like that? Reckless, we extreme weighing, sounds like. Bon dia, immigrants. Je tenho saudade de minha terra. He's homesick already. It's kind of, he's, you're from the UK, Prof. We've been in the Portugal, back in Portugal, uh, where you're resettling. And now back in the UK, um, back and forth, back and forth, and um, homesick, experiencing the saudade. Uh, for Portugal, very interesting. And I see some of your comments uh, that are coming in a little later on. Let's have a quick look at the bottom of the of the uh, comments to see um, how the sound is this morning. Seems okay, I think. Uh, maybe it's just what I'm seeing here. 
um, at my screen, which make, is making it a little, little glitchy um, this morning. Okay, let's let's proceed anyway. Buddy, great to see you yesterday. Uh, bon dia, I had a lovely time yesterday. Thanks to all that showed up. Today's looking like a good day. Have to go to Coimbra to see a doc, though. Wish me luck. Well, bosort to you, amigo. And uh, Victoria is here again this morning. Thanks, Victoria, for joining us two days in a row. Okay, we have a today in Portuguese history as well. I've got a little bit of tea to drink, and I think I'll bring you the Casa do Dia early uh, this morning from Braga. Thanks to Cindy B, our property snoop, who's found us that one um, this for this morning. Uh, I've, got a, I've got a couple um, lined up and ready to go, so uh, perhaps another tomorrow. Although, actually, Frank might want to show us an Algarvian home um, tomorrow. Let's see what happens, shall we? Uh, let's just leave this hanging here for a moment then. Everything is politics. Thomas Mann. What did he know, Prof? Uh, everything is politics. Yes, okay. Um, I don't know if that's aimed at me and my um, my reluctance sometimes to go to, to bring politics in or to reschedule it. You know you know me. If, um, if it's a conversation worth having, I don't mind having it. But there's a time and a place and a context, isn't there? When I saw this, first of all, this morning, Prof, everything is politics. But my, my response, my retort to you, my friend, would be, well, is politics politics anymore? Um, the politics I see in the UK and to some extent the US isn't really politics. As you know, when, you, when I think of politics, I think of the machinery of human communication, discourse, organization that would attempt to make society better. Um, I, I don't see much of that in what is called politics anymore. I see, I, I see, I mean, it's, it's, it's been taken to a new level in the UK, isn't it? I see people behaving very badly under the name of politics, basically um, self-serving, self-interested activities under the guise of politics. So I don't mind, I, I, I don't mind, I mean, we, we, you're right. I mean, Thomas Mann was right. Everything in a sense is politics, but politics isn't politics anymore, is it? Politics is business and machinations and uh, manipulation. It's not, it's not much to do with the original task. Um, like so many things, it's like so many things in, the, in our times, it would appear. So let's go over a little bit of um, Portuguese history, shall we? Moving on from Thomas Mann, and to a little bit of uh, mention of the Portuguese Restoration War, but we can't go there until we've done this. Down, put the cup down. <laughs> Here he is. Um, with today in Portuguese history, then, uh, where are we? Today in Portuguese history, 1644, the Battle of Montijo, uh, fought in Montijo, Spain, between Portuguese and Spanish forces as part of the Portuguese Restoration War. The battle ended with both sides claiming victory. Sounds like politics again. Um, the Portuguese, for winning the battle, the Spanish saw it as a strategic win as they prevented the Mateus de Albuquerque uh, from capturing, Bad capturing Badajoz there. Thank you very much. Um, reminded then, taken back to 1644, the Battle of Montijo by the Prof this morning. Seriously, the Prof, how are you doing? And what's it like to be back in the UK? Thank you so much. You're on the move. You've been sailing and still you managed to bring to us Portuguese history, for which we are very grateful. Cheers, mate. And um, yeah, all the best with your business. Uh, over there. Uh, who else is in? Andrew is in. Man Cave Andrew is in. Of course, if it's Thursday, it must be Man Cave tomorrow. Um, I'm sure you'll get an invite to that. Uh, Will Rogers quote of the day morning. James, rumours travel faster, but it don't, but it don't stay. Rumour travels faster. Not the singing artist rumour, but the rumour the thing, the scurrilous matter of rumour travels faster, but it don't stay put as long as truth well, ain't that the truth, or is it just a rumor? Yes, talking of rumors, uh, yeah, that thing, you know. Um, oh, I heard a rumor. Really? How do you know it's true? Because uh, I started it. Hola, bon dia. Alegria. From Pomba. Got it right today. Well done, Matty. <laughs> you finally figured out where you are. And, um, must have had a coffee this morning. Bon dia, Carl, from a warm Algarve this morning. Not hot, he says. You see, you notice, not hot, but warm. Well, warm enough, I suspect, and a little bit uh, drier than Belfast from what you were saying yesterday, Deagle. And it's an hola bon dia from the Algarve from uh, Victoria as well. Bon dia, kids, from sunny Praia de Rocha. Fija, 
Keys on a page. And Deagle, where are you? <laughs> Deagle, where are you? Tony, we missed you yesterday, my friend. We did, didn't we? And I maybe see you tonight uh, on the webinar, uh, Tony, Baldy Locks. Um, a great webinar participant as you are. I was here lurking, um, as they say, uh, Moaz. Yes, and another lurker. Um, who would like to be known is outing themselves from lurking in the shadows of the Good Morning Portugal show um, is John. Morning, John. I'm going to bring your picture uh, to the screen sometime during the show uh, this morning. Um, what's this? Uh, you said we could post something here and you could share it on the GMP show, right? Absolutely. From John and Pam, Bon Dia Alegria, fellow Gumpers, from a couple of dedicated <laughs> dedicated lurkers, uh, would you believe, uh, we'll be coming from for a scouting trip mid-June and hope to meet some of you at the Silver Coast meetup. Um, so let's, the least we can do is bring you out of the shadows of lurking, of your, your dedicated lurking, and bring you into the full light and full glory of exposure on the Good Morning Portugal show. Where are you? You're somewhere. You're still lurking. You're lurking in my software somewhere here. So let's uh, bring you on now. John and Pam, I present to you, everybody, John and Pam, uh, who have been lurking. And are now, I could, have I got my bit bar cello? Let's do this, this for them. Lurkers no more. John and Pam there. They're looking forward to seeing you too at uh, the Silver Coast meetup in June. Okay, let's uh, move on then through the chat, through the comments, see what's going on this morning before I bring you a casa do dia. I watched, what's this? I watched, I watched, come on. Um, I watched last night and spied her bird life, just about forgiving her for not saying Portugal is better than Spain. Oh, I think this is a... <laughs> <laughs> this uh, this is uh, that was must be some typos in there. It doesn't make complete sense, but I think what he's getting at is a little appraisal of your performance yesterday, Victoria. Um, I enjoyed watching her interview, says Moaz. I've always thought she was the American YouTuber from Algarve. My bad. <laughs> oh, I see. I, so maybe this is you're referring to the, uh, the to the to the other American in the Algarve. Sorry, Victoria, <laughs> to, to to lump you together like that. Um, I'm not sure which one you watched, Prof. Quite frankly, um, why am I using the third person, her. Exactly. What's going on? I don't understand. Bon dia from COVID isolation. How are you feeling, Anna? Uh, would like to know how you're feeling with that um, and uh, isolating yourself there. We're glad to be in your your, your new place. Uh, get well soon. Um, yeah, all the best to you. Uh, I'm right here, actually, says Victoria. And um, thanks for coming out uh, from behind your monitor and sharing your beautiful self with us. Uh, Tony from James this morning. Brian's in as well. Vertical Rotisserie Taylor, as we now know him. And next on the initiation process, a man cave appearance, Tony. Oh, there's an invitation. Uh, that's a, that's um, a bold step. Jeff's also in. Hey, Jeff, how are you? Lovely to have you here. Jeff is a member, everybody. And uh, shout out to all the YouTube members. Thank you to each and every one of you. Um, I put a little uh, advanced clip up for you in the um, if you look at the, the messages. Posts. You can use YouTube like social media. I'm sure I don't use it to its full advantage, but you members will see that I've put a little more select for you for your uh, priority enjoyment uh, in, in return for your generosity um, towards us. Thank you very much for being members. And morning to you, Jeff. OK, I have to go back to my exercises before Carl starts the show. Too late, Moaz. Too late. Is this all chat before before the show? It's fine. Carl is a latte. No, Carl is late. Um, there, um, the Swiss timekeeping engineering of Toblerone. What? And Francis is here, hopefully talking some sense, because not many other people are this morning. Bon dia, alegria, todos. Happy Thursday. Trust you're all good. Yes, thank you for making a coherent sentence, Francis, um, this morning. And Michelle is in. Yeah, that's that's fairly straightforward as well. Bon dia, Carlos. Uh, wishing you a lovely day. Right back at you. Igualment. Stephen's in. Morning, Stephen. Bon dia. And Gina C. Bon dia. One more day. Loving it. Oh, be sorry to see you go, Gina. Come back soon. Bon dia from Jack Polly as well. And Pedro Martinez, who we don't often see. But Pedro is here this morning. Where's your comment gone, Pedro? Stop running around the comments. Um, why am I using the third person? That has to be from the erotic novel. <laughs> what 
winner. Yes, Stephen Wells. Very, very good. I'm just trying to find, Pe- <laughs> for trying to find Pedro. Uh, my name in capital. I've seen my name in capital letters. Am I in trouble in the comments? I wonder. Um, and he's here from the gorgeous Barada, Barada region, uh, video chatting with my kids. It's, it's one of those situations where just suddenly the chat has disappeared in front of my very eyes because of all your input. Um, is that another erotic novel entry? Bon dia from Pedro Martins. There we are. How are you, Pedro? Todo bem? And um, yes, did your kids? No, they didn't. I couldn't believe it, Matty. Got home. They call them pancakes for some reason, especially the little one. Can I have a pancake? Okay. They're on the side there. Help yourself. That was a mistake. Did your kids leave any stroop of waffles for you today, or are they all gone by now? They, they were gone. They were gone soon after I brought them into the house, uh, Matty. I think I got a half of one, maybe. And those greedy little rascals at the rest. Um, thank you very much for those, by the way. Her bird life, yacht lol. And yes, I agree. She was very diplomatic. Re Portugal versus Spain lol. Is it, what is her bird life? Is that a YouTube channel of an American in the Algarve? Am, 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 I, am I up to date now? Um, neither at this time, but at, but we'll sign up on Facebook before the end of the week, Andrew Gilchrist. Tony teasing them there at the man cave. He will make his entry into the man cave. Ooh, uh, um, and um, yes, looking forward to Tony, I'm sure the man cavers are. Uh, you've got to learn this. It's not really a handshake. It's more of a sign. Um, um, have you mastered that? And is that a requirement, uh, Andrew? Do people have to learn how to do that before they enter the man cave? Um, it's to post out the studio invites. We have a Facebook page too. Definitely for men. Oh, that's quite a little... Um, I think he's being a little bit um, controversial there, possibly. Um, video chatting to the kids. Three of four are together in Portland. Well, that place is about to get lit. What? Uh, we were chatting about all about the beanie my son stole from me the Oregon UFO Festival, and the all-important EFF. What is, I don't know what that is. Please enlighten us, uh, Rebel Mama. Um, and when you say lit, that's in a good way, I hope. Um, I, 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 I'm sorry, I'm not with the street slang there. Um, Cindy B is in as well. Bon dia, Agria Gumpus. How you doing, Cindy, this morning? Uh, we'll show that Braga property. We better get on with it, actually, because uh, Vitor will be here soon. Uh, Baldy Lock sorting himself out to get ready for the man cave there. Bondi all from Owen. Great meet yesterday. It was lovely, wasn't it? It's was quite relaxed and easy going. It seemed like there weren't that many people there. But then when you added them all up, um, I think we were still into the 20s again, over 20 people again, which is quite incredible. And nearly 100 people now on the group itself on, on WhatsApp. Not the group itself, but the group that we use to organise ourselves. Nearly 100 people there. Um, I am filling in a form to get my NIS. You have our condolences. What is the Portuguese word for single, not married? Um, unicorn, yes, uh, that I should put at Estado Civil. Is it now casado or unico? Um, okay, I would. Um, I'm going to defer. I'm going to defer. Oh, capital letters for my. Let, let, let's see if we can help you out with that, Matty. Let's ask Vitor when he arrives. I will send you that thing we talked about later today. Disculpa now. No, you've got things to do. No worries. Um, now Casado is not married. No, no problem, Rebel Mama. In your own time. But Unico is single, lol. Somebody else sh- should answer. Yeah, Vitor. We will ask Vitor. Okay, um, just one more comment then. And, and it's about politics. And then I'll come back to your comments with Vitor a little bit later on. Uh, my grandma, born 1905, told me her dad used to say, put all politicians in a potato sack and pull one out, uh, meaning they're all the same. It's been going on a long time in the US. Yeah, absolutely. Hasn't it just? Um, since I think people could see that that particular career um, could uh, help them with a number of their needs, um, a lot of people have got into it under the guise of helping others. And what we think is politics, when actually um, it's something quite, quite different. And, it, and it's never been more evident, has it, um, on, the, on, the, on the global stage as we get to look at other people's politics as well, which we haven't always been able to do. And, and it's an even bigger potato sack um, if we take a look at, uh, if we use, extend that metaphor of your, grand, your grandparents there. Okay, adding to the stream now, the Casa do Dia. Thank you to... Uh, Cindy, for this, finding this. It's a T2 for sale in Braga. Look at that lovely stonework already. You can tell. Well, it's a very good clue that you're in the north of Portugal with that interior. It could be this. It could be anywhere in some ways, but I think that's quite a characteristic finish um, for the north of Portugal. Some nice timber roofing, exposed, and some nice exposed stonework as well. Almost schisty. Yes, I said schisty. 170,000 euros will buy you this T2. 
And um, let's have a look at a few of the photos. If I click on these, what will happen, I wonder? Will I get a slideshow? Uh, let's see if we do or not. Yes, we do. That's exactly what we want. Courtesy of Remax, this one, an L-shaped sofa. Um, I imagine that's parked in front of the telly, as most seem to be in this day and age. Having a little look around the house now. It's, it's quite it's nice on this split level. Not brilliant for accessibility if you need a, a, a more level home. Yeah, there we go. The, the, the uh, L-shaped sofa is in front of the telly there. And there's your dining table, which comfortably suits uh, seats, <laughs> suits and seats six people with a view out onto the patio there. Um, very nice. A traditional Portuguese furniture. I wonder if that's included in the sale there and if that's your thing. Uh, that, that used to quite disturb me when I first came to Portugal. I'd been attuned to Scandinavian light-coloured furniture. Uh, in the UK, uh, Habitat, Ikea and all that sort of stuff. And I've grown more fond of the darker Portuguese furniture now. Oh, there's a more contemporary and lighter kitchen, however. That's um, a nice little kitchen there. Not a huge place. I think this is a compact and bijou residence, but that's a lovely outdoor area there, isn't it? And that obviously gets a bit of sun. There's a sunshade up there. There's your outdoor kitchen and eating area. We're in Braga. I think Vitor has already joined us for this. And look at those lovely sliding doors there into another that's probably the other aspect of the patio area we're probably looking at a terraced house here and um, i've got that rug that's uh, that that's the rug i think my son called um being hugged by a thousand mums it's really soft and lovely um and it was available from intermarche i believe it's a, if it's the same one i don't have that kath kidston style duvet set though and counterpane they're very nice very nice uh, traditional look there um, so that's one one of your T's of the T2 and a, a bathroom refurb there, nicely tiled. Yeah, it's very nice. Uh, very nice indeed. And there's your your generous entranceway. It's a door and a half there, isn't it? And back to the beginning there. Thank you very much indeed, Cindy B, for finding us that one. That's what 170,000 euros will buy you in Braga. So, São José de Salarazo e São João do Suto. Uh, there and uh, let me of course put the listing and um, if that's something you'd be interested in or if you want to contact the agent orlando silver orlando you look a little bit serious there my friend um but if you do speak to orlando so please mention my name our name expats portugal um to orlando and say we saw this property of yours orlando this listing on the good morning portugal show can you tell us more can we have more particulars particularish uh, okay so let's uh, remove that from the screen now and free up a little more bandwidth and see if our connection to the north of Portugal is satisfactory. Oh, no, we're not. I don't think Vitor is ready for us yet. It's not even nine o'clock. So I think he wanted to join us at one minute past um, today. Microsoft has given me a serving suggestion on the screen, which I didn't ask for. Go. I would take it off the screen if I only knew how. Um, it's it's not clickbait. It's like unclickbait. You can't get rid of it. If I click on this, wish me luck. OK, it's opening up another window, I think, somewhere else so that I can look at news I don't even want to see on a different browser. Microsoft, do you do you realize how much you annoy people? Uh, yes. And we don't care. Um, Carl, I'm reading my favorite book, Robert Tressel, The Ragged Trousered Philanthropist. What a great name for a book. Right. And I've worked with every character in the book. Ah, so human archetypes are plenty there in there. Right. Um, not unlike Animal Farm and Lord of the Flies, as I think we were discussing yesterday or the day before. Joao F. Good morning, everybody. Wish you all a very sunny and pleasant day. Well, thank you very much, Joao F. Igualment, right back at you, mate. John could be Hank's elder brother. Oh, yeah, it's, it's true. I'm looking at the photo as I am in my uh, picture browser here. Um, well spotted there, James. Deagle, just look at the wiki. Did you know after his death, the publisher changed the ending that he'd written? What? How did he do that after his death? Oh, the publisher changed the ending um, that he had written. Now I have to get it. Love Irish writers. Do you know Manshan Magan? Oh, that's a fave of Rebel Mamas there. Yes, why am I? That was hilarious uh, this morning. Thank you very much, Stephen, for that comment. Why am I using the third person? That has got to be from the erotic novel. Very, very good. Deagle um, says, Rebel Mama, we order our books from a bookstore in Ireland. How lovely. Deagle could have brought you a few over, giving you, giving you a chance to get some warm weather down in the Algarve as well. Another section, what is cement with Localidad in the Morada section. Vitor will be with us in just a moment. If there's anything you've ever wanted to ask a Portuguese man, but we're afraid to do so, you can ask Vitor this morning. I'm sure he won't mind. TheVitorCosta.com if you want to know more about him. 
And uh, I just started my program from the diet center, says Moaz. And today's breakfast is halloumi cheese. Watch out for those cheese purveyors of the halluminati, uh, Moaz. Cucumbers and olive wrap. It's 370 calories. Well, it could be worse. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Soltero, is that single? Soltero, thank you, Maxine, from, for that, Soltero. And uh, the Electronic Freedom Foundation, the only organization fighting for digital rights, very important nonprofit. Well, thank you for letting us know. Uh, the Electronic Freedom Foundation sounds like a band from the 80s as well, doesn't it? Halloumi cheese is Greek, Middle Eastern cheese. Well, thank you. It's rubbery. Well, <laughs> Kawaii pandas. No, I'm not going to do that joke. I actually complained about that joke. Um, I, 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 I wrote a letter in um, in the 80s to Capital Radio complaining about that, that Chinese racist joke. Um, I'm a little bit more relaxed these days. Bon dia, Carl, and everybody from Kawaii pandas. How are you doing, Kawaii? Are we have you as a regular now, do we? You do not say unico in such cases. You say soltero, single, not married, and not living together as a couple with anyone either. Thank you, Joao F, for clearing that matter up for Matty. Let's bring onto the screen now. Are you ready, Vitor? Yep, thumbs up from Vitor. He's busy doing something now. Oh, sorry to bother you. <laughs> how, did, how did you get here? <laughs> well, I just clicked on this link, and there you were, the VitorKoshta.com. How are you? To the way. Interesting. I need to speak to my lawyer. I'm great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, got a bit sick this weekend, and um, but oh. that, but I'm a lot better now. Well, I'm so sorry to hear. Oh, nice mug, sir. Very good. Okay. Um, so you are you are you're making a good recovery. What 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 have you had? Any number of bugs going around at the moment, right? I don't know. I just kind of got a cold or something, and then the other day, uh, you know, the the night suddenly got colder. So I think I got some cold, and then this whole thing happened. Done better yeah. now. Seasonal, a seasonal thing by the sound of it. Um, what do you mean the night's got colder? Is it cold up there in the north of Portugal? Uh, uh, sometimes, like uh, we had a storm. I don't know if you had it there closer to south of where you are. Um, it was forecast. It was forecast, but it did not manifest. So you had it up there in the north, did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, it, it probably started about um, a week and a half ago. Yeah. Because before this weekend... Uh, we went hiking with Bob and Viv and uh, another. Um, she, she she was a lady from from Hawaii that she she was here for like a few weeks house sitting another uh, expat couple's home, Ooh, and nice. uh, we went hiking with uh, with one of our friends there uh, here in the north as well. And when we were almost over, all of a sudden, like you look at one side and it's like completely clear blue skies. And then just this giant dark cloud starting to roll over. And they're like, wow, this is not something you see every year. You're right. And so but, but we survived, but clearly. And so we had a, a big storm, a big storm the other day as well. It was some thunder and lightning, very, very frightening, which again, Galileo, Galileo. I don't think it happens every year. Hmm. I don't think it happens every year. Like uh, whenever I was a kid, I would always see like, um, you know, on cartoons and movies, whenever it would rain, there was like thunder and lightning and bolts and explosions. And I was like, that's weird. Like it never, uh, there, there, al there almost never is any lightning whenever it uh, it rains. But I guess that might be a Portuguese thing. I don't know. They were, they, they, they'd they forecast um, dry thunder, a dry storm as well. So you were, you were supposedly only going to get thunder and no rain. But um, I think talking to a few people this week, the weather forecasters were a little bit uh, wanting, uh, lacking uh, over the last few days. But great to have you here, Vitor Costa, our man in the north. Any updates then from the north of Portugal? I know it continues to be very popular. More and more inquiries. You've been on your local radio station, I think, as a result of all this interest. Tell us about yeah. that. Yes, yes. Uh, and it's been absolutely crazy because, um, you know, and... I'm not sure if I mentioned this yet, but Maria, which is my wife, she actually quit her job exactly a month ago, as in she stopped working a month ago and joined me cool. um, in helping all of you. Mm. And at the same time, like all of a sudden, th three of our friends, or, or rather one of our friends came over with another one of his friends. We started seeing what I was doing, talked to another guy. And we just organized, and all of a sudden, we are now creating a website, and we have some social media accounts and marketing and PDFs. 
we did that uh, video interview with Bob and Viv that in Ponte de Lima. Yeah. And it's now if you go on if you go on on YouTube and look for Vitor Costa, I should yeah. be like the second or third result, which is quite a, an achievement in Portugal, right? <coughs> it is. Yeah. <coughs> oh jeez. Oh dear. Oh dear. Just cleaning cleaning oh, up so the, the, <laughs> for the morning. But yeah, and to give an idea, like we're already way over 600 subscribers, and that's almost unheard of for basically a new channel on YouTube. It's, it's amazing. You're a phenomenon. I've always thought this, and and there's the evidence. So tell us about this whole team, then. What's going on? It, like you're all realizing that you're you live in paradise, and you want to share <laughs> it with more people. What's yeah, happening? Yeah, th that was more kind of a spur of the moment thing. Um, but at least one of them. Uh, I feel like he would be such a huge asset that we are uh, trying to see what we can do to actually have him an official part of the team instead right. of just, you know, friend helping out. And mm. in fact, he has been helping me out already. Mm. Like this week and the last week, um, one of uh, my clients arrived from Colorado and we've been looking all over for a home for him, his wife and his... Um, his um, his wife's brother. I, I forgot the word. Brother-in-law. Brother I wonder what you're that's saying. It, that's you know, I thought it was going to be a child, a pet, you know, or a, a classic car. But it's, no, it's a brother-in-law. It's a brother-in-law that they brought. Yes, him. yes, yes, exactly. Wow. And so, you know, we've annoyed the visits with them. But then I was supposed to go to France for the weekend. But then they, fly, they canceled the flight. But I was sick, so that was good anyway, so I could rest. And then on the other day, I was a bit too sick to to leave so he went on my behalf because he he has been going with us on those visits yeah um but um but um this one he just went him and uh and the client and they've been great he even though he's never done this before he really knows the area he knows how to talk with people knows how to pay attention and it's awesome yes Incredible. Okay. Maybe you're overdoing it. Maybe that's why you're a bit poorly. I mean, there's so much to do, I guess, isn't there? So many people to show so many people. I think places. it's more of a coincidence. Yeah. I might be overdoing it a slight bit. Also, it yeah. seems like everybody arrived on these weeks. Yeah. But, um, but, but yeah, like I have been like this in the past many times. It just okay. so happened to be at the time where I got the most work. Okay, so Portuguese grandma, what would she tell you to do? Would she be feeding you, filling you up with caldo verde or sopa de pedra? Oh. What would, my what my would mother be... actually came in here and cooked canja de galinha. Okay, so tell it the chicken soup. It's an international. Yes, uh, yes, it's, yes, yes. It, it's a global standard. So tell us more about that particular recipe then, if you're a poorly Portuguese person. Um, it, it's really simple. She just basically boils, you know, the the chicken. Yeah, like with the bones and meat and everything inside, um, onions and carrots, and then when the the chicken is cooked, she removes it. She then you know shreds it and then puts it back into the pot, oh and then goodness. you eat it. Oh, and it also has those um, those small like pasta grain things. Oh, which ones like, are they then? Pasta so, grain. Uh, let, All right, well, let me see. I'm going to go to while you're finding that, let's go to a few of the comments this morning. I think um, Sam Nazare has uh, christened our Casa do Dia today as the Casa Tortilla. Is that because it's a thin house, maybe? I don't, I don't know. Or a flat house. I'm not sure. Or it's overfilled with. <laughs> What's, bless you, Santini. Saud. Um, there. Yum. Uh, halloumi. I love Arab food. Let's go to Morocco together when you come, Moaz. I need your Arabic skills there, lol. We will bring a physical therapist along just in case. Yes, in case the what the the halloumi is a little bit too chewy, possibly. Hello, bon dia. That's a nice way of putting it. That's, that's an Aussie Portuguese hybrid, there, isn't it? Hello, bon, hello, bon dia. Uh, there and unico means unique. Now, I think you should put that on your health record. Uh, put that you're unique. Let them know who they're dealing with. Um, Matty from Joao F. Unico doesn't mean single. It means unique. Um, or the only one. That would be even more impressive to have on your medical record, wouldn't it? I am the only one. Stand in the Santa in the <laughs> enter the center of the Saud and stand there. Oi, oi, so what's your marriage status? I'm the only one. 
Oh, that doesn't sound so great. I, I thought I thought that's wrong. I was using Deeple for translation. Well, that will teach you. Okay. So what else in the north then? Um, what, what, have you got any nice listings you can tell us about or nice stories, anecdotes? So you're obviously helping lots of people, Vitor. Not yet. I will be having a listing in uh, Vila Nova de Cerveira. Yeah. Which is even more to the north. It's really just kissing Spain. Ooh. That can, that can end badly, can't it? I've heard about this um, when Portuguese people kiss Spain. Bad wind, bad marriages, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. But that being said, um, we, we have been um, taking a look at the market. And uh, we've noticed that there seems like the... Um, the... Um, the... Um, the rental market is starting mm -hmm. to recover a bit. Like in the Braga area, yeah like for for a period of time there have been no rentals available okay oh so, that's what you mean by recovery there just hasn't been any any stock yeah there hasn't really been any stock things were mostly overpriced and it's been a challenge to find many places for many of my clients yeah but now all of a sudden like a lot of them are appearing so maybe there's something going on there Maybe I don't know. Maybe tourist season ended or something, and now some some things are more available. But mm -hmm. yeah, real estate market, like with, with all of these interest rates and the way things are going, feels a bit crazy right now. And I have no idea what's going to happen in the future. Okay, well, thank you for that. Uh, <laughs> but people are looking to you to to know about this, aren't they? Including your local radio station, who called you in to talk to you about it. What's the name of the radio station? Uh, it's called um, Radio Wonders do Lima. Okay. So it's the Ponte de Lima radio station here. Yeah. Uh, and it, it was an awesome interview. And actually, I've met a few people actually on the street that are like, hey, weren't you the guy on the radio? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, thank you. I guess I have to do more of that. And actually, one of the, uh, the, the bank manager of one of the banks here, Novo Banco, he he got in touch with me and he wanted to you know do some sort of partnership i talked to him and it seems like you know um i probably am going to refer him some clients because um not because you know i can be a bank promoter and of course i would get um some compensation for that but i did tell him hey man that's awesome but i want to make sure that my clients have a good experience right Mm -hmm. If I can yeah. get like 500 from you, but they get a better experience somewhere else, I will send them somewhere else. You know, yes. Like, yeah, of course. And uh, he explained that they also have on staff, they have a guy who's actually um, qualified in several languages. I think he speaks English, German, French, Spanish. I think wow. those were the ones. Yeah. I'm like, sure, I have to meet him. And then um, when I get any, any clients that would benefit from it, I'll... Um, I'll let them know, get get them in touch. The one challenge about it is that I don't think you can open the account fully unless you are here in Portugal. Like you can do almost all of the uh, the bureaucracies, right? You can send all of the paperwork, all of the documents and this and that. But you have to be here to actually sign, to open the account. Because I think there was a period of time where um, there were all kinds of... Um, ease of life things that the central banks were allowing you could do this digitally yeah. and this and that but as a result there were a lot of scams going on yep. and so people you know in general they would rather find blames than taking responsibility so whenever they get scammed they blame the banks and they send complaints and so they were like hey you know what if you guys don't like it then we're going to remove all of these ease of access from all of you and now you can't blame us from doing this. And okay. so they did. And um, and yeah, and still, do, do, do you want to? I, I can share a story that he told me uh, about yes, this. Yes, please do. Yeah. So they, they actually have a, a client that I think they, they have in court now. I don't quite remember if it's them that put him in court or vice versa, probably vice versa. And this is what happened. So the client got a scam email. Right, someone saying he was it was from the bank, and on that email, they asked for his PIN, like the code to access his account, and so he did. 
And then they asked for, okay, we're going to send you a, um, a text message to verify, uh, you know, your authenticity. You put in the, the, the text code. So that's two layers of security. And then, so there is that one thing here. Um, I don't think I have it here. So do, here, here in Portugal, you have like these uh, matrix cards. Oh, really? This is a really no, uh, well, I, I thought you were going to say that you were going to tell us about the little uh, authenticator that looks like a little pocket calculator. But this is something else we're learning about Portuguese culture. So this is excellent. A matrix okay. card. So it might be a bit tiny, but I'm sending to your WhatsApp. So maybe you can uh, pull it up on the screen. Yeah, sure. Okay, this is interesting and useful. Thank you. But carry on. So I, I will bring up the Portuguese matrix card. Oh, I will. I, will. I, I just prefer having the visual there. Oh, okay. So that All people right. don't get confused. Give me, Give me a moment. I've never seen anything like this in my life. If you, if I was asked to guess what this was, I would, I would have thought it's like you know football statistics or something like that. Oh. <laughs> Um, okay, so oh, this is a way of authenticating mm. for security purposes. It's like a code so, breaker, so, isn't it? So here's how it works, right? Yeah, and here so are it, this, these are Vitor's bank details, everybody. So they take a yeah, screenshot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the way it works is uh, some transactions that you're going to do, they will ask for this validation, uh, particularly more remote operations, right? So in yeah. this case, uh, let's say it's asking on the top, you see there B2? position yeah. three yes right? which means okay. you have to go to you know on the left side to a b and then two and you have seven one two yeah and then position three would be the number two. Oh my and goodness. so you use this matrix to put in usually three numbers sometimes two numbers from that matrix to confirm mm. because there's so many numbers that uh, you have to have the three correct ones right and I, so think what Charles, is, I think Charles Dickens featured this in one of his books. Yes. Yeah. And so what happens is this client uh, provided a PIN number on, yeah. the, on the email, verified the text code, and then he spent like one hour copying all of those numbers off the matrix <laughs> to give to the scammers. And now he's blaming the bank because he lost oh, all the Less and all the time he just thought he was playing battleships. Yes, I think. Yes, yes. Oh, it does look like, like um, it does look like banking battleships, doesn't it? Okay, I'm gonna go for B2. Oh, you sunk my destroyer. <laughs> I, got my, I, I got all my bank details at the same time. There's got to be a better way, isn't there? And uh, and it's because of people like that gentleman, I suppose, that all of us have to be a little bit more inconvenienced to stop him getting into any more trouble on yeah. the internet. He shouldn't yeah, be allowed actually, on his own. But, but that is actually a good conversation because so many people don't realize this. And I, I, allow me to, you know, get a little bit off topic because I feel like this is something that might be important for many, particularly yeah. if you're not been around, you know, technologies and everything as much as I have. So nowadays, computer systems are safer than ever. Yeah. And hacking is becoming more and more difficult. So the main technique hackers use now is this thing called social engineering. It's basically them making you do what they want you to do willingly. Right? They? Who's this they you're talking about, Vitor? Anybody who wants to get something out of you okay. maliciously, right? All right? So, for instance, that is why you get so many emails like, you remember the Nigerian prince scam? I think everybody yes. knows about the Nigerian a lot prince. Of I have like $10 million. I don't know who to give it to. Yeah, so yeah, I get yeah, yeah. you out of nowhere, right? Around two, year 2005, maybe. I had a lot of Nigerian friends like that. Never made any money, but uh, yeah. So yeah, yeah, time. exactly. So, so, emails. so that's a good example of social engineering, right? They're not asking for your password or this or that. They're saying, hey... Uh, I am this person and blah, 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 and I want to help you. If You, you just need to do this. Or some yeah. other examples are, um, you know, like that people pretending to be a bank or Netflix or whatever. So oh, yeah. I used to work at a, um, 
the Apple Care support line. We would take oh, calls geez. from the UK, yeah. from people who needed uh, help with their um, Apple products, like iPhones, iPads, and then uh, uh, the the MacBooks. And one of one type of calls that we got very often was actually about scams and uh, things of that nature. So, for example, I um, one time got a call of a guy. Um, you, you guys are breaching the contract and uh, this is terrible. I'm going to sue you and this and that. And you have no right to do this and blah, 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 blah. I'm like, well, sir, thank you very much for telling me. And of course, we want to do the right thing. So tell me what happened. So the, you, you went off the contract to charge money from my account and just got an email saying from Netflix that I got charged $47. I did not approve of this and I'm going to see you and blah, blah. I'm like, I can definitely understand that and that's definitely terrible. But the good news is that was a phishing email. And he was like, oh, that uh. email was not sent by us and you haven't been charged. Oh, and if you notice on the from address, it is not Netflix. It will be like some random numbers and letters. Numbers, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. now, did you put in your car details? Yes. Very good. I would advise you contacting your bank, canceling the card and making sure everything is OK. Very good service there, Vitor. So we're talking about the north of Portugal this morning and online security. If you've got any questions about <laughs> online security or if you've got an Apple product that needs sorting out, every tool can probably deal oh, with that. Uh, I'm a little bit outdated on that. I don't think the yeah. skills I had back then work now. I, knowing Apple as I do in a quite a limited way, I'm sure they would not approve of that and would come down hard on us. Uh, Pete's in this morning. Uh, Born de Alegria, a lovely day ahead with Lady Kay and Cheery Phil and Alex helping me get my tractor tire off. It's a four-person job. Should be productive. Have a great day all. Look at the tires on that. And um, look, I was lurking yesterday and I admitted it today. <laughs> it's not a crime. It's not a crime. Moaz. Oh, Vedad, I forgot. I had a Moroccan friend who got mad at her nephew for trying to teach me Moroccan Arabic since oh, that plan is not going to work then. Uh, with Moaz's Arabic is not going to be working in Morocco. The trip is off, maybe. But so maybe it's a coach trip and we could all go. I didn't notice that you had already clarified the meaning of single before me. Didn't mean to take away your shine. No one takes away anyone's shine here. No worries about that. Vitor, your fan mail is in. Morning, Vitor from this show in Australia. How about that? Vitor, you legend. Look at that. I got told off by Gilda on Monday for not letting her respond to her fan mail. So please... Uh, Speak to these lovely people who are reaching out to you this morning, if you will, Vitor. Or maybe you don't want to. Okay, Hello. just a word. Okay. Um, it was freezing. Is that uh, my my stream or the uh, or your house? Yes, it was. And my house is still freezing. The north is terrible. Do not come here. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, we know that's a ruse just to keep the north nice and quiet, isn't it? Uh, yes, I have added your streams to my morning routines. Um, who doesn't like adding a stream to their morning routine? Honestly, though, I was lurking for about four weeks, too shy to say anything. Haha. -ha. Well, I think you can. You've had a nice, um, a warm welcome. I think Kawaii Pandas. So uh, I'm glad you you uh, you shared your stuff. Speaking of that. Kawaii, just oh, okay. because I have this on hand. What's going on here? I don't know what's what 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 you mean. And the connect. What is the connection you've made there? Is Kawaii a, a genre of of so Kawaii of... means cute in Japanese. Oh, so cute pandas. Now I understand. Sorry, I'm up to, I've caught up with everyone else now, probably. Um, I live in England. We're learning a lot about kawaii pandas. I live in England, London, and hopefully not for too long. <laughs> Fingers crossed. More fan mail. Uh, bon dia, Vitor. Cold in the UK, too. Come on, summer. We can do this. Vitor, maybe the storms manifest differently up here in the mountains. We've had thunder and lightning. Very, very frightening there, too. Storms several times up here. So cool, uh, there, and uh, not familiar, what's this, with, with it, but we had a Syrian tutor for my youngest. He said that Daniel had a perfect Egyptian accent. Wow. And a bon dia, Moaz. Moaz, you're getting a lot of love and attention this morning, and why not? Baldy Locks, love to be watching this show with you. It appears that sometimes we're unable to be here at the same time. And I still haven't had a call from anyone in the United States who's watching this on Catch Up. Come on. 590-303. No, that's I've missed a bit out. 913-590-303 on WhatsApp if you want to send a voice note so that we can play it during the morning show so that you can hear it when you listen later in the day. Maybe they're asleep. 
Yeah, but they Time watch it on... are a thing. They are asleep, and a lot are asleep or bleary-eyed watching. What I'm suggesting, Vitor, and you might have a, a, a smart suggestion because I know you're a very innovative guy, but I'm suggesting to Americans who watch on Catch Up, if they send me a WhatsApp message, I can play it. It's like traveling back in time, isn't it? They, I can play it tomorrow morning, and then they can hear it tomorrow afternoon or evening. And yeah, hear of, them course, of course, of course, of uh, course. We that have just... What, Doesn't what? quite feel the same, but yes, yes, yes. Yes, no, it will never feel the same as being here. Those of us who are being here will always be able to say we were there. Uh, we have we have just had an offer accepted for a small farm near Castella Branco. So excited. Can't wait to start moving to Portugal. Good morning to you, Phil Ailes. Um, great to have you. That's an interesting um, logo there on the Facebook profile. Good morning to you. Orso, what does that mean? I don't know. Um, I hope that's savoury, Jack Polly. Uh, bon dia from, or is that a kind of rubbery cheese as well, maybe? Sounds like it, doesn't it? Bon dia from a sunny Pavor de Vajim. Greetings, Carl. And Vitor from our friend Mark Rigby, also in the north. He's a trendsetter. He was, oh, um, the, um, he, he was in Pavor de Vajim, what, a year ago? Amazing trendsetter you are, Mark Rigby. Past the grains that sound like orzo. That's what uh, Jack was talking, talking about there. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> Mama, love your description. And have to trek. Vitor is awesome, such a positive presence and so full of energy. Got to love him, as the local radio show did. And now you didn't answer my question earlier on. Why did they? You are the news in Ponte Lima. What did they ask you? What what sort of questions? How are they probing you? All right. So we had so much to talk about. We should probably do another one. But uh, we talked a lot about really? what I do, right? Helping Ooh. Americans. We talked about Bob and Viv. And a little bit of how real estate here is in Portugal and how yes. it's, um, it's still a little bit not very transparent. And that's what I'm also working towards, you know, making more transparent. And it's like, okay, even if things are done the way I consider bad, quote unquote, yeah. in terms of ethics or agents or whatever, hey, as long as the public knows, then... You know that that's fine. If the if the clients know how it works and they're okay with it, then that's great. But I don't think they do know because it's like most agents and agencies say one thing in public, but then behind you know closed doors, it's another thing entirely. So, for instance, um, the the one thing that I find the weirdest out of all of them, particular, I think particularly Americans might find this strange is um, if agents that have listings here, certain agencies, for some reason, they don't want to share the deal with buyer's agents. Because like, no, no, we don't share, we don't share commissions because we want to keep it all for ourselves. Yeah. And it's just really weird because it's like, does your client know? Does your seller know that you're sending buyers away because you're <laughs> going to get less in your pockets? Probably I've, I've actually had a situation where um, one of those very big uh, agencies here, I gave them a call. Hey, this is Vitor from Nuno Venceslau Business Solutions. I have here an American couple. They arrived in Ponte de Lima. I met him. They want to buy here in Portugal and they're interested in your listings. Can we schedule a visit? Uh, let me speak to my commercial director. Okay, no problem. He comes back. Hey, Vitor, I spoke with him and we um, we can't do the visit because we don't share with other agencies. Sorry. Wow. And I was like, hey, that's no problem at all. You can keep the full commission. I'll just be their guy, their friend. I'll I'll be with them and you can keep it. No company policy. Oh, man. You, that, that's just truly awful. And you're right. The seller of that house should be disgusted by that, right? You have you had an opportunity to sell my house and you just wouldn't do it because of your your vested your deep up to your neck vested interest. Well, here's the thing, okay. Let's let's get a bit of creative and imaginative because I know that's your thing here. With hmm. with the with the age that we live in, we, we talked about the the dark side of, of digital and what can go wrong. But there are so many benefits, of course, of um mm -hmm. having, having sure. a digital having a digital context and the emerging blockchain technology. And to me, some of the best digital solutions to some of life's um, chores, if you like, and processes are authentic, authentic online uh, processing. So, you know, you would sign up, you could, you, you could create, you could imagine a, a real estate system in, in Portugal or anywhere in the world 
where you you sign up, you join you join a, a, um, a an authentic, secure, but um, a secure, authentic, transparent process where you list your property and mm-hmm. everything, all the inquiries are are seen by both by you, the agent, and the seller. Um, uh-huh. Where you where you're at at any minute is visible. I mean, that's the beauty of digital, isn't it? Everything can be recorded and shared and seen um, and can yeah. be made secure. Let's face it. it you know, there is a, high, a very high level of security. And like with all things in life, it can occasionally be penetrated. But I remember when I, when I got divorced many years ago, I, I had this. It was a really early bit of excellent technology where there was a step by step process. Quickie divorced. If anyone's in that condition, quickie You signed up, you paid. And it took you through step by step. This is what you need to do next. Um, you just say quickydivorce.com. Quickydivorce.com. You're not looking it up now, are you? But quickie, quickie <laughs> house sale, quickie house sale.com. I mean, <laughs> you know, <but> this, is, <coughs> this is what you need to do that next. That sounds so wrong, but I get it. <laughs> yes, I divorced. Hey, get divorced on the weekend. No, well, it's, it's the age we're living in. We're all friends now, but um, th- th- this sort of process could happen, but doesn't. And it's and, it, and it's back to the old human nature stuff, isn't it? It's fear and greed, I suppose, that it, and 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 tradition or whatever you would call it, or yeah, yeah. La- laziness or whatever you might call it. So thank goodness you're challenging that, and thank goodness you had a chance to talk about that on on Radio Pont de Lima. And mm-hmm. it sounds like there's a part two coming up. And Bob and Viv, I need to ask you about them. Bob and Viv are in your video. They were talked about on the radio. Are they celebrities now in Ponte Lima? Oh, yes, yes. Like, <laughs> sometimes I actually get more requests for them than they do for me. Oh, okay. <laughs> we'll see. Right? Give so them a lot of people want to meet them, know their story. And it, 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 it was really great because many people talk to me, hey, you know what? What Bob and Viv said, like, we were watching the interview and that was us. Mm. Right. Like uh, how because basically if he had stayed where he was, he would basically have to work until he died. Right. What what income he was getting. But here they managed to be able to to retire here and not have to go through all that and not have like eight months out of the year in freezing conditions. Right. So, you know, I'm really happy for them. We're really excited where things are going. And to address that point of yep. technology, um, I have no doubt that within 10 years, real estate, at least here in Portugal, will be 100% digital compatible. Yes. So, uh, it, it's doable, isn't it? It's doable. It it's is. just, it's it just will the be a matter of laws and them approving and people getting used to the idea. But I have a, pre- a friend that is also a real estate agent, but he's a lot into the crypto and metaverse world and all of these yeah. things. Yes. And he, he, he's actually the one who says that in 10 years, like you'll be able to go online, you know, this listing website or whatever, yeah. pay a fee either in crypto or in real cash or whatever, and then the deed will instantly be yours. Well, wow. kind of like buying an NFT, but that NFT is the actual house, right? Stop it. Stop it. Don't be talking about NFTs now and confusing everybody. Okay. Well, 10 years time, you say there's going to be real cash. I doubt it. But we should... Okay. Um, Villa Nova de Severa is where I used to shop at the Pingo. Really sweet up there on the Rio Minho. So tell us more about this listing, if you will, please, uh, Vitor. I haven't seen it yet. I just got the contact yesterday night. Oh, you're such a tease, honestly. Okay, um, we will come back to that in due course. Maybe you'll have that for us next time you're on. Have we anything to add about? We didn't do so well, let's face it, on the solar last time you were here. We had good intentions of talking about solar installation. Any more news or is that still a work in progress for us? Oh, yeah. Uh, I think it kind of derailed last time, but it was a fun conversation nonetheless. So, yeah. <clears throat> when it comes to solar, I can um, give some details. I'm, I don't remember what I said last time, so I'll try this again. So okay. on, uh, on the one hand, so to give an example, there was this uh, five-bedroom house that, um, that I was on the other day where um, they, uh, they used to pay around 150 euros in, um, in electrical per month. Mm-hmm. Then they installed solar and their monthly bill, including the payment to the solar panels, was like a hundred. 
So in terms of a natural raw investment, they already um, were saving like 33% in their bills just for installing solar panels. And uh, now the government, they, 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 ha they added this uh, initiative where, um, where uh, if, you, um, if you do updates to your house that would improve the energy certificate, like solar panels, even windows, doors, and um, renewable energies, heating systems, all of that good stuff, that they would refund you up to up to 85% of those 85%, roughly um, 2.5 thousand per each. So let's say you put on doors and you put on solar panels and you put on this and that. Each one could go up to 2,500 in refund. Now you have to pay for the whole thing up front and then you send them your, your bills. And if they approve, they will return it. Uh, usually that uh, isn't an issue. Um, I'm not sure when they will reopen the program. But uh, Portugal is betting a lot on renewables and green energies, so it might be worth considering. Okay, I have a numeric um, condition where as soon as figures are starting, uh, are talked about, I kind of um, glaze over or get confused. You're, oh. you're, you're saying it's a good thing, basically, there. That's a good scheme. And who was running it? Uh, it's from the Portuguese government, actually. Oh, is it right? Okay, and 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 yeah. is that oh, expect able to... to receive it in twenty years? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but it's open to any house owner, right? Presumably, if you're a renter, you can't do that. You're not really. Happy. If you rent, you can also do that. Really? Oh, okay. That's good news then for people. So you approve Although of the then you would have to consider. Okay, do I want to invest a few thousands in a property that's not going to be mine? Yeah. Okay. Your landlord will probably say yes. <laughs> so that when you move on, they benefit, they inherit that. Okay, so but but basically speaking, help is available, government backed help to invest in solar, and it seems to be advantageous. Yeah. How do, yeah. how would people find out more to get themselves on the register for that, Vitor? So I will have to double check, but um, it would be through a, through a government website. They don't have it pulled up here right now. Sounds like trouble. Sounds like trouble. Okay, we'll get back to you on that. Um, th look, we're trying to help Matty out with his um, address as well. In the Morada section, you have one, Rua, and then two, Numero, street door number, then the localidad, the name of the village, very good, and city for postal code, village or city. Joao F, you saviour. That's really, really helpful for anyone filling in their address here in Portugal. So thank you for that. Um, that's wonderful. I don't, I don't know. Maybe you want to send me that, that on WhatsApp as well. We'll stick it on our forum. Talking of which, talking of forum and be our, our site being hive-minded and helping each other, I've got a really good announcement for you that's just in. <laughs> you can add... It's a Barcelos Cocro Vitor. Don't look so surprised. You can add your own events now um, with the link that I've just sent you. Now, we, have been, we are being sent so many links at the moment of things that are happening around Portugal. And you might want to comment about this, Vitor. Um, we, we had a, a guest on the show, another northern Portuguese uh, fellow, by the way, and we, he was asked the question, why don't Portuguese people advertise their events? His response was, because we know when they're on. Now, us foreigners and immigrants and expats don't know, and we often find out the day after, or whilst the music is playing in the local village, <laughs> that, that there is an event on. Please, folks, will you go now? Um, well, you know, on a different window, don't close this window, but on a different window of your computer, if you have an event locally, you can add it yourself to expatsportugal.com forward slash events forward slash community forward slash add. We would like that so much. Please do that. And then, what I can do once you've added the events, I can share them on the screen on the Good Morning Portugal show and share them with you. Thank you so much, Astrid, for enabling that on our website. That's fantastic news. Just in this morning with a bit of this. <laughs> Come on, you know what to do. <laughs> Yay! You are born within that cockerel's crow. Uh, I guess I'll have to add, the, add in there my birthday party. Yes, please. Uh, Vitor's birthday party. Where you may, who's going to be the first to add an event? Is it going to be Vitor's birthday Why party? Why not? I, I can imagine me maybe like uh, signing up. Hey, 
the, uh, my wife's birthday party or whatever in there, like for fun. And then all of a sudden we have like hundreds of expats lining up. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. Well, the big question, of course, for everybody is, will Bob and Viv, Biv, Bob and Viv be there? Absolutely. Okay, good. Then we're coming. Uh, Michelle, oh my God, it's so beautiful. You're practically living in paradise. That's Michelle in Australia, who incidentally is interested in moving to Portugal. So yes, it's right. But it doesn't that tell you something? Oh, that thing. Yeah, I got one when I opened my bank account and had no idea what it was. I think I threw it away. Rebel mama, look at that. You threw your matrix card away. What were you thinking? You'll never be able to play banking battleships again. Okay. Um, <laughs> Novel banker, novel banker issues a matrix <laughs> with an account as well. So uh, Montepio are not the only there. Cairo is great apparently, but it's no Kidderminster. Um, <laughs> that's a homage to Garth. Oh yes, quite obscure. Kidderminster is the Kid Kidderminster of Birmingham. It's a place in the UK. That's probably all you need to know. Uh, this is why I advise foreigners to learn the Egyptian dialect, but learn Portuguese first. Okay, all right. Po noted. Noted there, Moaz. Andrew's rule of thumb, everybody. Lots of advice this morning of all kinds. Assume everything is a scam. He's so cynical. Unless you are expecting emails and text messages. Yes, okay. yes. That, that is great advice, yes. Oh, okay. do you mind if I just add one more story of the best scam Please. I've ever heard about? Please do. So <clears throat> there was this company, and one time they all got like an internal email, right? Somebody got gained access to the inside of the email, the, the company's emails. Yeah. And so he sent one of those really bad, terrible emails with different colors and different fonts. Uh, you know, you, you just could tell it's a scam, right? Like nobody in their right mind would uh, believe that one was real. And that was fine, right? So, okay, it was a scam. Nobody clicked on it. Hey, please click here. Give me password. And then, like, maybe a day later or something, they received another email saying, like, hey, guys, this is the, the IT department. Somebody left their passwords and whatever, and we had an intrusion. Please be careful. I need you all to click here and update all of your passwords, blah, blah, blah. And that was also, you know, uh, a scam that was not the IT department, but they first sent a really bad one and then they followed it up with a professional looking one, and everybody believed it and clicked on it. Well, well, oh, incoming. Let's see what happens here. No, you're uh, not taking it. I'll call him back. I'll call him back. Yes, okay. Question in for you, Vitor. You mean you like crypto? The prof is not a fan, you see. You mean like crypto? Yeah, you like it. No, You're no, you mean like crypto, but what oh, you I was mean talking about the, uh, the technology. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. Forgive me. Um, well, yeah. you, mean, you mean like crypto? <laughs> okay. Yeah, let me read. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, crypto will be part of it. And in fact, um, so first of all, last month, the Portuguese government approved like a law that would allow actual deed signing, you know, the final step to buying a home to be done digitally. Yeah, uh, for the most part, that's still not really in effect. There's like three law offices that are in beta tests and they're trying it out. It will have to be like through a Zoom meeting. <clears throat> but in oh, in sure. ten years, I can uh, I can see that being completely and totally digital. Like, I, you know what I think he means when you you were talking about scams and he's saying Vitor, you mean like crypto? He is oh. he's convinced. Cryptocurrency is a scam, I think. That is our learning yeah. profession. So the, the thing with crypto is that um, many of them are scams for sure. For sure. Yeah. So then it will have to be a matter of you figuring out what's the real one. It's kind well, of cool. like... Yeah, exactly. yeah, it's like saying money is a scam, isn't it? Uh, of course, people get ripped off using money or not using money or... Yeah, it's it, money it's involved. kind of like the crypto market. It's like a huge market, kind of like the Punta de Lima one, where yeah. everybody is selling coins. And maybe there's one or two that actually have gold and silver coins, but all of the others are lead coated exactly. in gold exactly. or silver or whatever. Yes. So if yes. you don't understand crypto, I would not uh, recommend buying whatever it is. And even if you do understand it, you know, it's rule number one of investing. Do not yes. invest anything that you would need in the next two or three years. 
Yes, fair enough. Good, good point. And um, it's like many things in life. If you don't understand what you're doing, do not get involved, apart from relationships, of course. Beware the Facebook posts asking survey questions. Yes, what was your first pet called? Um, they're, they're fishing, yeah. aren't they? Again, they're looking for details. Often, if not always, they are asking you to share the answers to security questions. Facebook yeah. fishing. Yeah, there you yeah. go. What was your first pet's name? Classic. An absolute yep. classic. Oh, more about the addresses. The postal code is a number. It's it, This is not a type of video um, or a classification of something you're going to watch on the internet. This is your postcode in Portugal. Four X's, a hyphen, and then three X's, followed by the name of the main town associated to that same number. So just in the way, yes, yeah, it may be different to where you're from. Certainly in the UK, we put the number of the street first and then the number and then the street rather than the street and then the number. So be careful with that. Just more shiny people. Just more shiny people. What's that? Is that about the scams, I guess? Uh, the North is terrible. Sorry, I was thinking about the UK. Stop it. <laughs> William Hokelby's here. Bon dia, Carlo Vitor. As usual, great, interesting topics discussed on the best show in Portugal. That's us, Vitor. How about that? Awesome. One piece. Um, it's long manga. For How far have you gone? That, that's to you in your uh, illustrated oh. novel. Is that what it's called? I, I only have the, the first chapter, and I got this so I could practice my Japanese what seriously yeah okay no didn't you didn't you notice your this whole thing isn't surprises. happening you're full of surprises Vitor. you're incredible okay just looks like pokemon to me but that's probably a bad thing to say isn't it um hola bon dia uh, oh you've got blurred uh, or you sneezed on the screen maybe fajo to fajo maze before i let go my caregiver he's giving us a star trek kind of sign that okay Go well and prosper, Vitor. My but, caregiver got a call from someone pretending he is from his bank and he gave him his ID. Oh, um, ID number, birthday. The guy then opened another account. His name is Stole Dollars. Do not give info on the phone. Uh, lots of a great advice. Th thanks, everyone, this morning. Wing William Ogilvy taking issue with the amount of viewers and how few likes there are. Only 18 thumbs. Come on, Gumpers. Smash the likes up. Okay, let's see what happens there. Um, uh, you're the expert on this. You've got a YouTube channel that's suddenly got 600 subscribers. What's your secret, Vito? Quality, I guess. The secret is serving your viewers and not yourself. And I'm in um, a YouTube group where people, you know, help each other grow on YouTube. Yeah. 99% of the posts are self-serving, complaining they don't have enough views, complaining they don't have enough subscribers, complaining that they finally got monetized, but they're only making like a dollar a month. Yeah. And all of them are focusing on themselves. How do I make oh. clickbait? How do I make better uh, thumbnails so I can get views? And it's like, hey, have you considered thinking about what your viewers want and making actual good content? So yes. That, okay. that, that that is a secret, really. And then every time learning, making it better, improving, and just you know having fun with that. Okay, very good. Very, very good. So much interesting, so many interesting things we're talking about. Thank you, William. You're right. Um, Povo de Vajim. If I Mexine's always good at correcting me. So I've been saying Povo de Vajim. Povo de Vajim. Povo. Povoa, povoa, there you go. Povoa de Vajim. Thank you, Maxine. Thank you, Vitor. Vitor, do you know of any builders that work with stone? I have an older property near Amaranth. What a beautiful part of the world that is that needs a wall rebuilt. Can you help him out with that? I can for sure. Um, I know I just met like a few weeks ago, actually exactly after the radio interview. Yeah. And they have um, an office here in Punta de Lima. You know, they're architects, builders, contractors, all of these things. And I'm really excited to work with them because when I talked to him, I got this impression that he also is obsessed with serving the clients and providing a good experience. Mm -hmm. Because okay. he said that er almost everybody they knew, and I am sure a lot of people here can relate, yeah. they had bad experience with contractors, with builders, yeah. with masons, whatever. Either they charge too much. Maybe they charge too much and they don't do the work they should have done. Yeah. They're taking forever. They um, they do bad work and then you'll have to rebuild the whole thing. And they're never accountable. It's always somebody else's fault. Oh, it was a supplier. It was this, right? And so they, I, I think they, you know, 
the investment might be slightly higher than if you would have gone with the alternative. But really, do you, do you prefer going for price or cost? Right? Mm, because if you go it. with a cheaper version, you'll have to pay twice or three times that amount to get it fixed. So okay. they not only do the whole thing, they hold themselves accountable. So whatever happens, it's their responsibility. And the guy, he actually can design furniture, custom-made furniture for the house. So oh my uh, I, um, send, me, um, send me a message, send me a WhatsApp or yep. an email. You can go to thevitorcosta.com. There's all my contact details in there. And also a book, uh, a button to schedule um, a meeting on my schedule. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. And... Don't can I give I people uploaded in there? Yep. Our PDF with the services we offer now. So that's really exciting. That is exciting. Can I give people your WhatsApp number? Of course. Of course. Okay. That's 351, everybody. 939 133003. That's going into the comments now. Uh, one exciting morning. We have our own events listings. Andy, if you could do that, that'd be great. If you want to put them straight onto the website, that'd be awesome. And then I can just share the screen and share everybody what's going on. And there's Vitor's number going into the chat right now. I'm here for the probing. Um, in our last eight minutes, let's crack on and look at what you're saying here in the comments and the questions. Uh, yes, I think you need to go to Pont Radio, Radio Ponte Lima uh, for some of that. So Rebel Mama, my oldest and youngest sons are anime nerds to, to you. Uh, Kawaii Pandas, the youngest draws manga style also. We watch lots of anime. Hunter Times Hunter is my favorite, or Hunter X Hunter, and Fruits Basket. It's another world, a li little bit like NFTs. Uh, Jeff, talking to Joao, that's nice to see. We are glad to see you here, Jeff, for this ungodly hour for you. Thank you for, the, for your efforts, your manful efforts to be with us. Really appreciate it. Johnny's in. How's that shoulder? Bon dia, Vitor. Why are the prices for houses or other sales sometimes a secret in Portugal and you have to send a personal message first? So why all the secrecy about prices? Is that because they might change at any minute? I think it has to do with, with um, you know, kind of like the Portuguese mindset, really, because it feels like many people here, not all of them, of course, but many people here, are um, as we were discussing kind of like that youtube thing they're more interested in serving themselves than serving the yes. client yeah and so they don't give information because they don't want you to steal that information and then go behind their backs they don't don't you know share share businesses because then they would only get half right and so everybody is so busy trying not to get stabbed on the back <laughs> yes. that they're not actually doing anything to move themselves forward greed and fear again so there you go and hopefully in 10 years time as was predicted here on the good morning portugal show by vitor and his colleagues things will change greatly to a more transparent and authentic way yes. of doing and business. that being said the great yeah. agents i know they're not like this there are a lot of great agents are transparent they're here to share and i'm constantly getting invited to whatsapp groups called like um I don't know, Portugal MLS. So we're trying to create some sort of system where some of the agents who really want to improve this, we're banding together, we're sharing our information, trying yes. to sell what doesn't, our listings. And then, because really, it just makes sense that um, doing this is the way to serve people. And also on the sake of transparency, I can tell people here as well, so I don't know how common this is, if the competition does this or not. Honestly, I don't care because when I, we make our decisions, it's like, what would be best for the client? So what we decided... That... Sorry, yes. go on. Sorry. No, no, I interrupted you. Carry on. So what we decided to do, like in terms of compensation, because a lot of people wonder about this, is we actually decided to start um, asking the client if they would mind you know, compensating us directly. And the reason yeah. is, so let's say that one of the viewers here wants to find a rental in Portugal, right? The typical one-year rental to get the D7 and all of these things. Yeah. So we had two options here. Either I'd be like, hey, don't worry about it. The seller will pay my fee or the agent or whatever. And then what would happen is we would look for the listings and... Um, 
and we would find the perfect home for, for that client. But then one or two things would happen. Either if it's the other agent or the owner didn't want to do the visit or share, you know, because they, they don't want to split, they don't want to work together. Either the client wouldn't get a place that they really like, or two, they would go and get it without me because that was the deal. And so they would go around, right? And that's fine if that's the, what serves them the best. And so <clears throat> if the buyer or the renter in this case ensures our compensation themselves, because just give them a call. Hey, good afternoon. This is Vitor from Nunes Metro Business Solution. I'm representing a renter here. But just so you know, they are assuring my compensation. I'm not trying to trick you into getting a listing because I know, unfortunately, a lot of agents do that. We just yes. want to give, uh, take a visit. If they like it, we'll move on to the contracts. All clear. You don't have to worry about anything. Great stuff. Well, here we go. And then we should shout out to all the great agents in this country. Yes, absolutely. Uh, it's very easy to go to the dark side, isn't it? And there are, I know that, um, you know, we work with a, a good handful of fantastic people, buyers, agents, people who are trying to revolutionize how real estate is done in Portugal. So keep going, you lovely people who are trying to revolutionize things and make it better. You're doing a fantastic job. You will be, you will work out for you ultimately. Oh, just a small note to uh, Gini. Mondelares, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's uh, Vitor Costa without the C, just Vitor Costa. Yeah, there you go. Bon dia from Sarah. An American visitor has departed. Her arrival, which sounds bad, but actually her arrival was plagued by bad luck, rescued by a hero taxi driver. You see, because you hear dark stories about taxi drivers at the airport, especially. But look mm -hmm. at this—he resolved all the issues, delivering her safely to Stubal. Uh, my pal is now a Portugal fan. Yay! Yay us. Yay, Portugal. Fantastic. And look at this. I feel bad for Vitor. He needs to be in bed watching Netflix and having my late mom famous chicken soup. Yes, um, he's all right. He's a young fella. We need him on it. We need yeah, to talk. Netflix will probably make me sicker, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> We need him on here. We'll let him go to sleep afterwards. Uh, Rebel Mama, you're a cool mama. We understand the payoff right now. My fave is Demon Slayer. I try not to keep up with it, though, so I can binge all the episodes. Uh, Vitor. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm waiting for the next season. Look at you. Uh, Vitor, I want to add a ridge blade to my house and an air fence. Uh, is that because of all those beans you eat? What does that mean? Plus additional solar panels. I have a lot of time for people that are living off grid and getting all their energy from renewables. Of course, the sunshine, the wind. Um, it's got to be done, isn't it? The water, little, little, little um, what is it? hydroelectric things. We see those in Portugal as well. <coughs> Loving your conversation, you two, Rebel Mama and Kawaii Pandas. You're so welcome here, Kawaii Pandas. I think you're one of, one of the gang now. Uh, sometimes I read an announcement of an event, but no address, time or price. Difficult. Again, that's because the local people know where it is. And let's see what we can do to change that and help with that situation. I remember a great simple scam the pupils played on the staff. They set up a fake login screen on their system and accessed all the staff's accounts and changed their grades. Wow. Clever pupils. Give those pupils jobs where they can put those naughty skills no, to exactly, good use. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, yes. Absolutely. People who do this, these hackers, that's why a lot of them are hired by the FBI's and all of these things. Indeed. Because here's how I see it now. There's kind of like two different worlds out there, right? There's a normal world where, you know, you go to school, you get a good grade, you get a degree, and then you get hired, go through the process. And that's what 99% of the people maybe go through. But then there's the outlier world where you focus on results and what you want to get and you kind of disregard the bureaucracies and you can still get there because think about this if anybody here decided to open up a company would you be more interested in having someone who could most definitely do all of the work you need them to do and even more better yeah. faster regardless of their education or whatever they can just get it done or would yes. you prefer hiring someone fresh out of college that has no work experience they have a degree and you you know may, maybe they, they they know how to do some of the work maybe they don't but it's like to me it feels obvious but uh <laughs> that's because you're a rebel as uh yeah. as uh Pedro yeah. was saying earlier on there I'm not update, a 
<laughs> Update on the Sarah's friend. She was the first of our friends to come here, so it was an indicator for the rest of them. We think they will all like it just as well. I'm sure they will. It's lovely to get that news and hear that anecdote this morning. Uh, Vitor, I'm impressed that you're learning Japanese. I was thinking of a new language for me, but first I start learning Portuguese, of course. Um, I think uh, it's, Vitor... It's more difficult, actually, Portuguese. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've mastered it. Uh, yes, I have said for decades that grades make education a competition, which it should not be. Interesting times uh, with all of these new ideas. I blame TED Talks. Hey, um, if you'd like, next next month we could do the whole three-hour show talking about the education system. Oh, we could, couldn't we? And we could set it right. Look, academia is in a terrible state. Underfunded, dumbed down, poor provision and overworked staff. And he's one of them. Uh, knowledge should be preserved and treasured. Otherwise, we'll have idiots running the planet. Oh, wait. <laughs> you make a good point. Cheers, Vitor. Oh, another comment bump there. I just scrolled down a little bit and then hundreds more have come in. Are you all right for a few more minutes before you need to go and have a lie down? Sure. Okay, cool. Um, cheers, Vitor, from Andy. Uh, Carl, I just added an event... Oh, bless you. Watch out. Can anyone else keep up with Andy and all the events that he's going to be adding? That's incredible. Uh, who are the idiots? Are those partying and breaking the rules or those paying for it? Good question. Yes. Uh, we're constantly people getting hurt. When are they going to actually change things rather than keep moaning about them? It's a right old moan fest in the UK. I suppose it's like that everywhere, isn't it, in, in so many ways? Like a science experiment. Where have we gone now with this? Uh, Vitor, what is your YouTube name? I couldn't find it. There you go. That You were responding to that. I can only find a bodybuilder. <laughs> <There's> a... <laughs> is that yours as well? Or is that a different yeah, Vitor? Uh, of course. Of course. Of course. <laughs> I can see that. You're so buff, man. Raj, Bondia, very informational this morning. That's what happens when Vitor comes. Good show today. Vitor is always fun. He really is. Electrolytes. Okay. Uh, we're off to run errands. Uh, ciao, ciao. Nice one, T-Duck. Thanks for being here. Thanks, everyone. There are people wanting to go, but they are glued to the screen while you're here. Oh, yes. Now I see it's because my husband's name is Vitor. Uh, no, I don't think any no offense problem. has been there fondle that like button for this victorious show victorious actually when i worked at the uh the apple care center a lot of clients would call me peter they thought that was peter wow and so i just started introducing myself as victor because then there would be no no confusion oh i see okay but there's a name for your podcast victorious that's good isn't it spy versus spy mad magazine i used to love mad magazine mm -hmm. trouble with hacking is if you're good you get a job if you get caught you go to jail yes yeah, it depends on what you hack well done Stephen. a great input this morning played by bad spelling and dyslexia held myself back rather than dyslexia holding me back right realize that if people have an issue with me then they have an issue with themselves well done chris that is a great attitude to have in life and that just about wraps it up oh what's this why do you always have to tease my appetite in every gmp show how unfair looking forward to share a nice big portuguese meal with you oh that's such a lovely promise isn't it and that is, that is quite a, a proposition I think I might have one of those myself uh, this lunchtime. Okay, Vitor, so good to talk to you. We will see you again. <laughs> we'll see. What is that? Is that a... Right I back. I don't know what they did. I'm just... Let's just... Let's the, man cave, the man cave will probably adopt that special signal. It's a lot nicer than, than the one they currently use anyway. So, my friend, get well soon. Thank you for being here, despite being a little bit under the weather. What is the Portuguese phrase for being under the weather? Oh, I'm not sure there is one. Is it something to do, nothing to do with turning chickens or sleeping with your feet out the window? Is there any? Okay. No, but that's because Portuguese people are hardworking and they don't talk about being ill. They just get on with it, I suppose. So, Forza, Portugal. Yeah, you, you should have seen my mother-in-law. Go on. Is this a mother-in-law joke? No, no, no. My, my mother-in-law, she's like a machine. She could be like... An arm could be falling off, and she's like, "Hey, I still have to cook for my guests." It's just a flesh wound, Abs <laughs> absolutely yes. right. Yes, but exactly. we will see you tomorrow, folks, with Frank. The fun continues tomorrow with Frank. See you tonight at the webinar with Gilda. I, I, I read vitro. <laughs> Say again. The, the oh, comments, intro. Oh, okay, fantastic. Uh, and uh, we will see you. We will see you tonight. We'll see you later tonight. Or we'll see you in the morning. Uh, the weekend is beginning right here. Vitor, thank you so much. Ciao for now, my friend. Bye bye. <laughs>
wonder what's in this box. Atelier de Dos. What's that? A sweet, sweet workshop, sweet studio. Okay, let's have a look. Oh my word! Look at that golden goodness. The sunshine on those Bola de Berlin. Each one a different filling. Can you believe? Oh, I cannot wait. Bye. Gotta go. Gotta go eat donuts.